So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the College of Nursing's annual scholarships and award banquet. P.S. We haven't had this in two years, so isn't that wonderful? What a blessing to finally be back in person. In recognizing the events caused by the pandemic, we utilize the ginkgo tree as the theme to this event. It symbolizes the longevity and resilience shown by each of you here tonight. Since 1950, Spartan nurses have delivered excellence and opportunities to communities around the globe. I was just listening to Dr. Patrick Crane talking about his trips to London, and he might be going down the street with a t-shirt on that's a Spartan shirt, and someone might say, what do they say, Patrick? Go green. Go green. <laughs> there you go. The college's rich history is defined by students, alumni, faculty, and donors whose investment and impact to healthcare is immeasurable. To our donors in attendance, your support has and will continue to light the way for generations of Spartan nurses. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And with that, there is a video that walks us through the history of the college as we know it today. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Eleanor Haas. I'm a traditional BSN student graduating in 2023, and I'm the recipient of the William G. Stuckel and Marion E. Stuckel Scholarship Fund in Nursing. And my name is Renee Garcia. I'm also a traditional BSN student. Um, I graduate this December, and I'm a recipient of both the Carol Robinson Beals Endowed Nursing Scholarship Fund and Mary B. McCartney Endowed Study Abroad Scholarship Fund. Eleanor and I, along with the rest of the students here tonight, cannot say thank you enough to the donors in attendance for their generosity and commitment towards our education. To the Spartan Nursing alumni in attendance, your impact to the field of healthcare and society and as a whole serves as an inspiration to the rest of us. Tonight, three of our students, all of whom came to the college through their own unique journey, will share their story with us. And now I would like to introduce Assistant Professor Dr. Patrick Crane, who will lead us through tonight's event. I hope everyone has had the opportunity to experience being right in between bifocals and normal glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you, Renee and Eleanor, again. Welcome donors, students, alumni, faculty, and friends here this evening. What a pleasure to be back in person again. Um, I'm going to go just off script one little bit and one more time. Go green. Go white. Go green. Go white. Excellent. The scholarships presented tonight not only represent the generosity and rich legacy of our donors, but a well-deserved opportunity for our most deserving students. The mission and vision of the college wouldn't be possible if not for your support. And uh, we are very, very grateful as we prepare the next generation of Spartan nursing leaders. Now we will introduce you to some of our amazing students who have benefited from the generosity of our donors. With that, Please welcome Danny A. Hill, who is currently a student in our traditional BSN program. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? Good. <laughs> So my name is Danielle Hill, and I am the recipient of the phenomenal Florence Knotstein Endowed Scholarship for Nursing. <laughs> I firstly would like to thank God for blessing me with this opportunity and this platform that allows my voice to resonate with all of you tonight. My parents, Tamika Scott and Danny Hill, would also like to thank the donors of this amazing scholarship. <laughs> I am currently a senior pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree alongside two minors, Health Promotion as the first and African American and African Studies as the second. Every day that, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that looks so cute. <laughs> Every day that I'm blessed to see, I strive to be one of many definitions of black excellence. I would like to thank my parents for what they have done for me and shaping me and molding me into the young lady I am today. <laughs> Understanding the history of African Americans and medical treatment has fueled the fire within me to become a nurse because I will be the change. I would like to acknowledge the African Americans who were subjected to unethical experiments like the Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment and the enslaved black women whose bodies have contributed to modern day gynecology. I strive to treat every patient that I come into contact with as a person and not as a policy number. As you can see, I was raised in a revolutionary African American black household in the depths of Pontiac, Michigan. <laughs> My parents gave me everything, honestly, and I was a bit spoiled, if I do say so myself. <laughs> my father taught me how to understand the power of my mind and my spirit. My father, oh my Okay. My father taught me the power of my dreams. There was a time when I wasn't sure if my father would make it. I wasn't sure if he would even make it to see me graduate high school, but he's here today. And for that, I'm grateful. I wasn't supposed to cry yet, y'all. I wasn't supposed to cry yet. My mother taught me how to be a strong, independent black woman. And whatever it is that I would dream of, she would make come to pass. I truly do believe that my parents always knew that I was different. Throughout my life, I have always been a leader. 
While in high school, I enrolled myself into college preparatory programs like Project Edward Bound and C2 Pipeline while maintaining an internship at the prestigious Parker Law Firm. Once I became a Spartan, I just knew that my leadership skills would flourish here. I proceeded to become a full-time nursing student while maintaining two jobs. Y'all, I have two jobs right now. <laughs> The first position as a resident assistant for Owen Graduate Hall, and the second position as a medical records abstractor for MSU's Department of Medicine. I have held an executive board position with the Red Cedar Black Caucus as the resident hall association representative and volunteer with programs like Free Mind and Reach Outside. I have maintained my position on MSU's Dean's List for the past four years, with two of those years being an active member of MSU's Honors College. <laughs> and did I forget to mention that I'm only 20 years old? <laughs> the College of Nursing has truly impacted my stint here at MSU. Seven months ago, sorry. <laughs> okay. Seven months ago, I returned back home to visit my Aunt Linda, who was recently placed on hospice. When I returned home and I just spent time with her, I told my dad, I said, Dad, look, I don't want to go back to school right now. I, I just want to be with her. I just want to stay with her. I just, I just want her presence. And my dad went and he told her what I said. And with all the strength that she could gather, she said, and I quote, who ain't going back to school? <laughs> And that following day, February 22nd, 2022, my Aunt Linda lost her battle to cancer. I believe the hardest part about losing her, it wasn't just about not having her with me anymore. It was about being forced to learn a life and learn how to live a life without her in it. And that's, that's her right there. However, I truly do want to thank the College of Nursing for being here with me every step of the way. They ensure that I was okay emotionally, mentally, academically, and financially. And during this time of grief, I truly do thank you. College of Nursing, I really do appreciate you all. Once again, I would like to thank the donors of the Florence Not Staying in Doe Scholarship for Nursing for gracing me with such an amazing gift. In preceding graduation, I will obtain my PhD. And obtaining this degree wouldn't strictly be for me, but for the generation that precedes me to know that the sky is the limit because I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. Thank you. You know that's from the heart because the page didn't get turned. <laughs> um, my script says, thank you, Danny A., but I, I do want to say that speech exemplifies the power and the passion of Spartan nurses, and we are lucky to have you in our community. <laughs> Noah Freiberger, a DNP student, in the Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner Program was sent to present tonight, but unfortunately tested positive with COVID this morning. In lieu of a live speech, 
he was able to record his story and share it with us. Uh, again, the persistence of Spartan nurses <laughs> is on full display here. So let's take a listen. Good evening. My name is Noah Freiberger, and I am the recipient of the General Nursing Scholarship, as well as the William G. Stuckel and Marion E. Stuckel Scholarship. I'm honored to have the opportunity to thank all of the donors, present and absent. Your generosity has unlocked potential and resources for many brains tonight, mine included. I am privileged and touched to receive your support in my graduate endeavors. I am deeply appreciative and encapsulating my admiration for you all has proven quite difficult. Currently, I am enrolled in the Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner Program. Saying that out loud is still foreign to me. I've imagined what it would be like to be in this spot since I was young. You see, in 2007, my 11-year-old sister Natalie was diagnosed with stage 4 ovarian cancer. It took her fast, and I watched as she drifted away from me. I was 9 at the time unable to express or identify how I was feeling. But over and over, I heard the same thing, that a young kid like me won't understand, that this trauma of losing a loved one wouldn't affect me as much as it would for the rest of my family. But I understood. I spent three months in that hospital soaking in every second. After she passed, it was clear that this continued to affect me. My parents became concerned about my inability to be alone. I needed them next to me. I needed to know where they were. I was regressing, it seemed. I saw multiple therapists, all who told me that I would relive this trauma through each of my life milestones. Graduating high school, getting married, having my own child. But no one taught me how to work through the trauma then. What about the kid that needed help now? Where do you send a nine-year-old to get help when they're afraid to leave their parents' side. Turns out, that question has been the guiding force in my career. I earned my associate's degree in nursing at Lansing Community College before obtaining my BSN at Oakland. I picked up several credentials along the way, including my Certified Brain Injury Specialist certification that I earned while working with TBI patients. I was fortunate to be awarded the Presidential Scholarship at both of my previous institutions. Since earning my nursing license, I have committed my career to assisting adolescents suffering from mental health disorders. By earning my doctoral degree in nursing, I strive to create a safe place crafted for our younger population. The positive impact that you donors have on our education is astounding. Your donations to us and this program prove that our futures are valid, that our dreams deserve to be followed. Each of the donors here tonight have a role in laying the groundwork for our healthcare system in the years to come. So thank you for the confidence that you have in us, our education, and our career paths. My promise to you is that your donations will go well beyond us as students. The impact of your generosity will flow throughout our program, our community, and our patients. So that one day, when a nine-year-old needs assistance, they will be greeted by an MSU-graduated nurse practitioner who will continue this cycle of growth and healing. Thank you. What an incredible story. I'd like to introduce our final student speaker of the night, PhD student, Autumn Ashley. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. Danny A., that was incredible. You have a natural for this. And, you know, my husband's like, you're not going after her, are you? And I'm like, no, thank goodness. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, my name is Autumn Ashley, and I'm a first-year PhD student in um, the College of Nursing. And I'm the recipient of the Lido and Miller Fellowship. So, Danny A., know that there's also funding available for you when you're ready. So, <laughs> um, so I want to start off by first thinking all of the donors that are here tonight helping to make dreams come true for many of us here today. I want to thank in particular Dr. Lato and Dr. Miller for their contribution to my own 
personal journey. I greatly admire your work, Dr. Leto, and I also love our class time together. She's actually one of my professors right now. Um, and I hope I can set the same example you have for future generations of nurses. I started my nursing journey here at Michigan State University as well. Um, I was volunteering at Bertram Hills uh, during my undergraduate studies when I first decided to go into nursing. I was loving the time I was able to spend with the patients. I was actually able to teach a TAP class a couple times. Um, but I knew that this was, this was the right job for me. I knew this was, I was going to be where my career was going. I was one of the first graduating classes in the accelerated option here at Michigan State. Um, and wow, was that tough. I remember crying on my parents' couch for hours and hours. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And this was through the first semester, but somehow I did. Um, it was with the support of the, the, st uh, the faculty here as well as my fellow students. Um, so I was able to persevere. After graduating from Michigan State, I started my career at University of Michigan Medical Center as a hematology oncology nurse. I loved every minute I had caring for my patients. I was a night shift nurse and I remember countless 2 a.m. conversations, walks in the halls, laughs, dances, whatever it was um, with my patients. And I, 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 I felt so rewarded to be able to take care of them and influence their you know, 30 day stay that they would have with us. As I continued to grow and become more competent, I sought out different leadership positions on my home unit. I chaired different committees, I started a journal club, and I became a charge nurse and preceptor. I then decided to take the next step, and I pursued my master's degree in nursing business and health systems. And here I learned so much about health system operations, quality improvement, people management, um, and felt I wanted to take on a more formal leadership role. It was here that I actually found my passion for uh, research. I was, had the opportunity to work with the Center for Healthcare Engineering and Patient Safety uh, during my master's with an operation engineering student. And we were looking at reducing wait times for our cancer patients who are coming in the infusion center. So we used math models, which that was not my forte, but I brought our nursing perspective in to help reduce these wait times. We were able to present our work at ASCO, which is an oncology conference, as well as an INFORMS engineering conference. I was uh, promoted also to a supervisory position on my home unit, and this, um, however, was not what I was prepared for. I was like, what did I do? I remember the first few weeks coming home with total exhaustion, and working, you know, six 12-hour shifts was nothing compared to what I was feeling and experiencing after um, taking this new role. My relationship with my peers quickly changed. I was, not, I was leaving work not feeling that I was giving back and making that change in the patient's lives that I, I, that I felt so much as a staff as a staff nurse. It took me time, but I was able to reframe my role, and I, I knew how I could make a difference for my patients. In 2016, my now husband and I moved to New York City, um, and I was able to obtain a position at New York Presbyterian Hospital while Cornell campus, where I became a patient care director on a hematology oncology unit. Here I was really able to shine and create a culture uh, that valued teamwork, patient-centered care, um, and that was filled with love and laughter. Over the years that I was there, we, I was able to help improve the engagement scores. We were able to certify our nurses um, and promote our nurses on the clinical ladder. In 2018, I was awarded the first DAISY Nurse Leader Award, um, which I'm sure all the nurses in the audience are aware of the DAISY Award, so this was such an honor and meaningful moment for me. And I could see how, although I wasn't directly impacting each patient, it was through the nurses that I was helping to grow on the unit that was impacting these patients. So as a team and individual, we took every opportunity to um, submit abstracts to the Oncology Nursing Society conferences um, about the great quality improvement work we were doing. And in 2019, I did a podium presentation about building the next generation of nurse leaders. So in 2020, New York, as you all know, became the epicenter of the pandemic. And in a week's time, my colleagues and I had to completely overhaul our staffing plan, close one unit, and assist in opening a COVID hospice and recovery unit. The time was incredibly scary, as all of you, I'm sure, appreciate, but sent our lives in a whirlwind. In the next few months, I would assume the coverage of a second uh, unit, our bone marrow transplant unit, and the strength and courage of our teams uh, was just admirable. And us as leaders, we did everything to hold it together ourselves, but as well as keep lifting up our, our team members and supporting them as they were, many of them were losing family members and friends. Um, but in 2021, we welcomed the birth of our second child, my daughter. 
I think I sent a picture of those cutie pies. Maybe you should flash them, Marco. Uh, <laughs> um, but so we decided to move back home to Michigan after, after Charlotte was born. It was extremely bittersweet to leave the stellar group of nurses in New York, uh, many of which we had grown together over the past five years, as well as my colleagues. Uh, but knowing that my long-term goals were to become a nurse researcher, I found an opportunity to work with Dr. Donji here in the College of Nursing as a project coordinator for a HRSA-funded grant. So through the past year, I've had the opportunity to build a program that's benefiting patients throughout the state uh, and, tr and helping training and supporting nurses to be sexual assault nurse examiners. This has been such a fun year, and I'm so grateful for Dr. Donji's encouragement throughout the project. That brings me here, and although I can't remember ever having the time to teach a TAP class as a nurse, I am so proud to be a Spartan nurse and look forward to the next four, hopefully not too many after that, years of preparation <laughs> to become an independent researcher. I want to again thank Dr. Lado and Dr. Miller for their generous support for nurses like me and for all of you sitting here helping to make and prepare the next generation of our nurse leaders. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Autumn. I'm just, I'm blown away by all of the stories tonight and the talent we have here. Let's give these students another round of applause. I'm sure we'd all love to hear more stories like these tonight. They are incredibly inspiring, but homecoming kicks off tomorrow. We probably all need to rest up for tailgating and whatever else we're up to this weekend. I do hope each of you takes time this afternoon to interact with those at your table. Whether it's a student sharing in their personal and professional goals, a faculty member sharing a, a memorable teaching experience, or a donor expressing their passion for nursing, take the time to build the connection tonight. That's what we are, we're a community. And I, for one, am constantly, as I said, inspired and blown away by each of you here tonight. I would like to now introduce Alexa Anderson, PhD student, a recipient of the Lado Miller PhD Student Fellowship. Yep. Okay, sorry about that. Going off script again. <laughs> it's one strike, two strikes, I guess. Um, so now, um, our alumni, friends, and donors each have a compelling and impactful story about why they've chosen to give to the College of Nursing. Dr. Jane Locker and her husband Ronald have been supporting various initiatives at MSU for close to 40 years. Most recently, she made a tremendous impact by establishing the Access for the College of Nursing Endowment, which aids the Access program. ACCESS stands for Achieving Culturally Competent Education and Student Success and provides educationally and economically vulnerable students with the op opportunity to enroll in a co and complete a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. It has served as a catalyst for diversity at the college for over 10 years. We made a brief video to highlight why they give. Let's watch. You can't take it with you. So what's the best thing to do with what you have? Mm -hmm. And to do it while you're still living is, is exciting because you get to see how someone can benefit. My name is Jane Wall Locker. I attended Michigan State from the years 1971 through 1979. I have a bachelor degree in poultry science, medical technology, and a DVM from this school. I came to Michigan State because I wanted to be a veterinarian, and that desire was uh, since I was about 12. When I graduated, um, some of my colleagues who graduated early were already on their second job, so I decided to look into something different other than private practice, and uh, was able to be hired by Dow Chemical Company, and so I worked with lab animals uh, for my entire career. And we met through mutual friends at Dow. I worked with a person who was the, the fiance of Jane's 
coworker. They kind of like matched us up. And, uh, and so we're still married and it's been 33 years. The most rewarding part of my job actually was looking back over my career and seeing the shift in how my colleagues approached animals, going from when I started to being very clinical to when I ended, the animal welfare, the humane care and concern of the animals, actually, it, it was a culture shift. I chose to support nursing school at Michigan State because my mother spent a year here uh, just before the war started, World War II. She continued her education in the Cadet Nursing Corps in Saginaw, but she always loved this school. So when she passed away, and given Ron and I don't have children, I thought about her legacy and our legacy. And supporting the nursing school at Michigan State was a uh, natural. It just flowed. It was the thing to do. When a friend of mine came out of vet school a few years ago with a debt of $70,000, I was horrified, absolutely horrified. When you look at all the stuff with the, with the people that had this debt, you know, that's crushing debt for them, it takes them forever to get out of it. And so anything we can do to help would be, you know, to make it easier for the students. With the pandemic and being and what it, that allowed me to do is to step back and look at what was happening instead of just a narrow focus of my life and my work. It afforded me the opportunity to stand back and to see the inequity that's, that's all around. Scholarships are an important part of that. Helping them financially to achieve their goal, it's critical absolutely critical that that they be able to graduate and and not have to give up a dream because they have to pay for rent or child care and if this can help them in any way that means the world to me the fact that i wasn't giving to scholarships in nursing has been bothering me i finally was moved enough and we talked about scholarships and what would be the best type of scholarship, uh, and primarily for those of, of limited economic means. They're, they're the ones that need it. We came up with this, this plan to have this endowment, uh, and it's just named for access. I do not care to have anything named after me. Neither the professorship nor the, the vet school scholarship has our name on it, and that's intentional. It's not about us. It's about helping someone. No brilliant mind should be held back because of finances. That's wrong. We would like to thank the Lockers for recognizing the critical need for diversity in the field of nursing. Alumna Nancy Welke, MSN class of 2002, has been an avid supporter of the College of Nursing crowd power campaigns, which include causes like the Nursing Student Emergency Fund, Access Program, Student Conference Expense Fund, and many academic scholarships. These crowd power campaigns occur on Giving Tuesday, Veterans Day, and Give Green Day, and often address the most current and critical needs of the college. This video highlights the reason she gives, no matter the amount. Ever since I've graduated from Michigan State, I felt just the need to give back, to help other students, and that's why I continuously give, because I know that it impacted me. I'm Nancy Welke, I'm a nurse practitioner. I graduated from Michigan State University in 2002 with my master's degree from the Family Nurse Practitioner Program. Before I even went to the college for my NP degree, I didn't even really know what an NP did. I met a nurse and there was something about her that was just so special. She says, I'm in school at Michigan State University and I'm in the nurse practitioner program and I love it. And I thought, I have to go. That's what I have to do. I certainly found that all of the professors were so nice and kind and worked with me even though I just had my third child. I never stopped the program. I was determined to finish. I felt really supported when I was at Michigan State. I 
work inpatient at Ascension St. John Hospital in the cardiology department, and I've been there for 16 years. I love my job because I love the autonomy. We have a really great collaborative relationship with the cardiologists at the hospital. This is the longest I've ever been at a current position, so um, I really do enjoy my job. I always donate to charities and things that, that speak to me, that I believe in, that have helped me in some way. And when I was an undergrad, I was fortunate enough to get a couple of small scholarships and I always felt like that was something that I wanted to do when I was able to. In giving you receive and so I've always felt that not that the more you give the more you get but just that the giving consistently it's a part of my life. Marco, did you have Nancy coordinate the ginkgo shirt? You're a mad genius. <laughs> On behalf of the MSU College of Nursing family, thank you for your unwavering support. At this time, it is my pleasure to recognize our scholarship award recipients and donors whose generous contributions have made all of this possible. First, I want to direct your attention to the program books at your table. This beautifully designed publication lists our endowed and alumnal scholarships by name along with the student recipients. This program is yours to keep and we encourage you to take it home and read about each individual scholarship and how it came to exist. Each scholarship is unique in its intent and the way it was formed. Whether in memory of a loved one, in honor of an accomplished nursing career, or with the wholehearted belief that nursing will continue to transform healthcare in the most critical time, and the belief in each and every one of the students here tonight remains at the center. And with that, the following video highlights recognizes our scholarship recipients and the investments made by donors. The following students are the recipients of the 60th Anniversary Endowed Scholarship Fund. Leah Cosino, Megan DeBoer, Ryan Gannett, Sarah Rose, Alexa Bowles, Maureen Malice, Caitlin Mater, and Sarah Ruthruff. Nathaniel Quakel, the Nancy Ann Mulrennan Agents Nursing Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Carol Robinson Beals Nursing Endowed Scholarship, Renee Garcia and Loveline Cower. The following students are recipients of the Helen Calder Endowed Scholarship, Madeline Crowley, Taylor Jones, Brenna Gordon, Grace Veldheisen, Veronica Walters, and Madeline Wood. The following students are recipients of the College of Nursing Alumni Association Endowed Scholarship. Madeline Wood, Rebecca Weisberg. The following students are recipients of the Dr. John F. Dunkel Memorial Endowed Scholarship. Teresa Ung and Lauren Pajow. Kristen Butler the Julie Raines Dingerson Nursing Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Helene Fold Health Trust Endowed Scholarship for Baccalaureate Nursing Students. Sydney Marone, Nolan Schiotti, Natalie Stevenson, Sarah Zofchak, May Albarazzi, and Lena Kim. Callie Harris, the Glenn R. Dean and Anita C. Dean Endowed Fellowship for the College of Nursing. The following students are recipients of the Dr. Charles and Marjorie A. Gliozo Endowment Fund for Nurses and Caregivers, Madison Zagaki and Faith Ford. Laura Weber, the Janice and Alton Granger Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Michelle Gordon, the Captain Sean Grimes Nursing Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Inez and Gladys Harmon Endowed Scholarship. 
Haley Hitchcock, Natalie Stevenson, Jasmine Clark, and Grace Veldheisen. Pablo Garcia, the Hayes Tally Nurse Anesthesia Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Dorothy and Edward Hertel Scholarship. Ogechi Ariri Guzo and Anoop Bular. Michelle Lajeunesse, the Marjorie A. Holmes Graduate Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Nathaniel Quakel, the Rao and Joyce Coretti Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Kimberly Jones, the William and Angeline Keener Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Helen M. Kelly Endowed Scholarship. Taylor Polidori and Megan Sirick. The following students are the recipients of the Florence C. Kemp Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Olivia Gross and Grace Veldheisen. The following students are recipients of the Lado Miller PhD Student Fellowship. Alexa Anderson and Autumn Ashley. The following students are recipients of the George and Margaret Lorimer Parsons Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Kristen Borsma, Kaylin Brown, Jenna Curtis, Morgan Nilica, Shannon Lindsay, Kaylin McDaniel, Jacob Taylor, Megan Witt, Holly Wright, Stephanie Chamberlain, Yusra Hamed, Sierra Harnes, Caitlin Mater, Andrea Peak, and Katherine Woodcock. The following students are recipients of the Elizabeth Blay Mason Endowed Scholarship. Jasine Clark, Madeline Crowley, Taylor Jones, Raina Hornacek, Simran Kaur, Nathaniel Quakel, the Judge Paula Manderfield Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Mary B. McCartney Endowed Scholarship for Study Abroad. Renee Garcia, Madison Zagaki, Lydia Evans, and Rebecca Weisberg. Morgan Spence, the Mary Milner Estes Endowed Nursing Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Florence Nothstein Endowed Scholarship for Nursing. Lash Blackman and Danye Hill. Megan Matsky, the Retired Faculty Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Diana Rausch Memorial Nursing Endowed Scholarship. Kimberly Jones and Kevin Kimmel. The following students are recipients of the John A. Sandin II and the Dr. John A. Sandin III Endowed Scholarship. Shannon Lindsay, Maria Medina, Tatiana George, and Natalie Jamrog. The following students are recipients of the Gilbert and Leona Schumann Endowed Scholarship. Monica Burr, Kaylin McDaniel, and Sherilyn Patton. Hassam Aldin Varpai, the Kathleen Nowicki Schwartz and Michael Schwartz Endowed Fellowship. The following students are recipients of the Linda J. Spence Endowed Fellowship. Callie Harris, Wachira Surya Wong. The following students are recipients of the Angela and Richard Strawn Nursing Endowed Fellowship. Tolu Lope, Joe Ujari, and Maria Medina. Sydney Marone, Tammy Therese Strohmeyer Memorial Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the William G. and Marion E. Stuckel Endowed Scholarship. Marie Adkins, Margaret Anderson, Kaylee Aon, Noah Freiberger, Paul Glaza, Heather Harris, Morgan Nilica, Kristen Henry, 
Eleanor Haas, Trevor Gable Baird, Caitlin Mater, and Rachel Sager. Tucker Anson, the Vermeesh Regnier Nursing Endowed Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Conlin Werewine Endowed Scholarship for graduate students. Melinda Martinetti and Sarah Rose. The following students are recipients of the Janet M. Wendorf Endowed Scholarship. Celeste Sarzinski and Brianna Johns. Josephine Smith, William and Margaret Albrecht's Nursing Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the College of Nursing Scholarship. Sarah Beck, Jillian Brown, Megan Foley, Noah Freiberger, Mitchell Gerke, Kaylee Jokum, Gina Moss, Sherilyn Patton, Alexis Skurris, Evan Werbrauch, Joshua Winowiecki, Marie Adkins, Jessica Bates, Patience Niambe, Whitney Smith, and Morgan Spence. Irene Mayo, the CVS Foundation MSN Scholarship Fund. Kennedy Bailey, Dean Carpenter Memorial Scholarship. Assam Alden Barpai, Carol J. Larson Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Dr. Barbara Piper Nursing Scholarship. Ifioma Neji, Michaela Novello. Michelle Gordon, the Sergeant Leonard Bernard Graham III Nursing Scholarship. Ifioma Neji, Knowing Diversity's Essential Scholarship. The following students are recipients of the Susan Varbedian Lucan Nursing Scholarship. Mackenzie Desluver and Natalie Stevenson. Kristen Butler, the Terry Brennan Vial and Robert Vial Undergraduate Student Scholarship. I nailed that in one take. <laughs> All right. May all of the scholarship donors in attendance please stand. Yep, all of you. For your investment in nursing, which this year has granted educational opportunity for 106 students across all programs, Please give them a round of applause. I didn't say you may be seated yet, but you can be seated now. That's fine. <laughs> Will all of our scholarship recipients in attendance please stand? You represent 22 Michigan counties, five states, and two countries. Undoubtedly, no path here has been the same, but I can assure you that you all share two characteristics in common, longevity and resilience. The sleepless nights, rigorous coursework, superb planning, and other demands of nursing education are just a few cases of proof that these traits run through each and every one of you, and it will continue to light the way in your personal lives and careers as you become the global leaders for change that you set out to be. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Students, don't be afraid to ask donors, alumni, and friends of the college in attendance for their contact information so that you can stay in touch. 
Being part of the College of Nursing is being part of a family, and we want our family to stay connected. Once again, congratulations to our student recipients, and thank you again to our donors. I didn't say you could be seated either. <laughs> All right. Now it's time to recognize the 2022 Alumni Award recipients, who through their hard work, compassion, and integrity have embodied the true essence of Spartan nursing. We first recognize the recipient of the Alumni Service Award. This award recognizes an alum from the College of Nursing whose dedicated work and exemplary service have benefited society and the profession of nursing on a local, state, national, or international level. With a career in the US Army that spanned 30 years across three continents, the service, service demonstrated by Sharon Brown is exemplary. She not only served at the bedside, but is responsible for educating thousands of US Army nurses throughout her career. Following retirement, Brown has found great purpose in serving communities in Kenya and Haiti by way of medical mission trips. This video captures her extraordinary work. Service means to me being able to use a skill, a talent, or something in your profession to be able to help someone else. My name is Sharon Lynn Brown, class of 1985, College of Nursing. When you become a major in the Army, they expect you to take on some managerial roles. So I became a nurse executive, and then in my spare time, maybe one or two days a week, I would work half-day clinics and stuff like that. I work in a clinic, it's a primary care clinic. We do prevention, chronic disease management, and acute care. A part of this clinic that I like is that they focus on wellness. Everything is a one-stop shop, so if they need labs, they need x-ray, everything is here on board. And even if they need dental or eye care, it's here. The College of Nursing is who I am now, and a part of that is that they, too, support the whole ideal of prevention and taking care of those that are, have a higher need than ourselves. You got to get out there and be thankful and give back because that's important, just as important as making the mighty dollar. Where's Sharon seated? <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Would you mind coming up to say a few words? Good evening, everyone. So, I would be remiss if I didn't say, Go Green! Go yes, it's... Um, Wisconsin's against Michigan State, but I think we already got this. <laughs> I am humbled and honored to be able to receive the service award. Thank you, College of Nursing and the Office of Development and um, Alumni Relations for this honor. I think that I can say I've lived 60 years now. My birthday was last Sunday. Woo! And 37 of those years have been in nursing. And it all began right here with the College of Nursing. 
Um, I have my baccalaureate from Michigan State, my master's from the University of Texas, and then my doctorate from um, the University of Alabama, Birmingham. During all of my studies, all of my travels, I've learned that you have to love a lot of things, but one of the main things that I've learned is that you need to embrace culture and diversity. And for me, um, culture and diversity means going outside of just where your comfort zone is, not just worried about uh, what's here in your community, but looking at other areas that might need your help. And that's where my trips to Haiti and my trips to Africa have come in. Um, as I have retired semi, um, I plan to do more mission trips. COVID had put a little damper in that, but now that things have kind of settled back out, I want to get out there and really make a difference one person at a time because there are so many people across the world that need our help. And Haiti is one of those countries that is still struggling. Indonesia is one of those countries that's still struggling. We have people in Africa, women, that are being abused and now have nowhere to go because their villages won't take them back because they've been raped um, and having children with nowhere to go. So I hope that my story will inspire some of you, new graduates that are gonna be graduating this year, to go out and do some of that volunteer work um, when you have the opportunity because it is very rewarding. But not only that, I think that it shows that you wanna give back. And so uh, you've been blessed to be able to get your scholarships. Um, so now take a moment to be able to think about where you wanna go and give back to society. Um, thank you again for this award. I am honored. I don't think that I've done anything that no one else has done, but I'm very honored to have the award tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. Congratulations. Next, we will honor our recent Graduate Achievement Award recipient. This award recognizes a nursing alum who graduated in the past 10 years and who has obtained a high level of professional accomplishments. These include contributions to a current or past employer, history of promotion, military accomplishments, continued education, published work or demonstrated community service on a local, state, national, or international level. This year's recipient is 2019 BSN graduate Joy Chepkarir. At just 26 years old, Joy is the co-founder and president of the Moan Gaza Cancer Initiative, which was formed in 2018 in response to rising cases of cancer diagnosed at later stages in Carrico County and other parts of Kenya. In Kenya, about 75% of cancer cases are diagnosed at later stages, with curative treatment is impossible. Through her work, the organization has provided breast and cervical cancer education to over 4,000 women and girls and supported the screening of 100 women living with HIV and AIDS. She is also involved in many other nonprofit efforts, both in the US and in Kenya, and is currently a second year doctoral student at John Hopkins University. Joy couldn't be with us here tonight, but we will now share a video that captures her remarkable accomplishments. I think what drives me is my unrelenting desire to optimize the opportunities afforded to me to leave a positive footprint wherever life may take me. What most people don't know is that I repeated grade four two times, but ended up 
being the best student in elementary school, the best student in high school, and that's how I ended up getting a scholarship through the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program to pursue my nursing education at Michigan State University. I started Mwangaza Cancer Initiative in 2017 with the help of grants from Michigan State University and the Resolution Fellowship. Mwangaza Cancer Initiative is a non-profit organization I founded to focus on breast and cervical cancer education, screening and provision of financial support to low-income and insured women who need to be screened for breast and cervical cancer. So far, Mwangaza Cancer Initiative has educated over 4,000 women and girls in Kenya, and we have also facilitated screening of 100 women at high risk for cervical cancer. I founded Clean Water Equals Life project in 2019 out of a dire need for clean water in Bomet County. So far, Clean Water Equals Life serves over 800 students communities and patients from a local health center. My research focus is on breast and cervical cancer prevention and my dissertation will look at how women acquire health information and how that impacts their health literacy and their cervical cancer screening uptake. Joy is someone who represents perseverance and passion. She was really a young student, and at the age of uh, perhaps uh, mid-twenties, just thinking about how mature uh, she must have been in thinking about what she could do uh, to promote um, health in her community, just touched my heart. The College of Nursing at MSU laid a very solid foundation for me as a nurse educator, leader, and researcher, and I'm grateful for that. I'll keep saying it, I'm blown away with each passing moment of this ceremony. And last but not least, we'll recognize the recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award. This award recognizes an alum of the College of Nursing who has advanced the nursing profession through professional accomplishments and commitment to nursing education, practice, and research. Recipients must have demonstrated leadership and influence in their support of nursing and the college. This award is the highest level of recognition awarded by the College of Nursing. This year's Distinguished Alumni Award recipient is Shelley Martin, BSN Class of 1996. We will now play a short video featuring Shelley. The roles and responsibilities of a leader, in my opinion, are all about the people that you lead. It's about growing the people, it's about sharing the knowledge, and it's about inspiring them to achieve the goals of the organization. My name is Shelley Martin and I am a graduate of Michigan State University College of Nursing and I graduated in 1996. I am the Chief Operating Officer at Harmony Cares, which is formerly known as U.S. Medical Management. Harmony Cares is an organization that takes care of the most frail, complex elderly patients in their home. It is a primary care organization that does house calls as well as hospice and home health care. Harmony Care's main objective is to improve the quality of care, to reduce the cost of care, and then to allow frail complex elderly patients to age independently at home so that they can stay longer at home instead of in a skilled nursing facility or a long-term care facility or even in the hospital. I think that the College of Nursing centered me, created a network of really strong students that helped me to focus on my studies and be even better in school. I don't think you can go five seconds when you meet me without knowing that I'm a graduate of Michigan State University. So this school has inspired me and continues to inspire me, still being connected even though I'm thousands of miles away. Nursing is 
an education that is incredibly diverse. I think a lot of times the public doesn't recognize that. When I tell people I'm a nurse, the first thing they ask me is what hospital do I work in? And I always tell them I don't work in a hospital. I work on the business side of nursing. The foundation of who I am is, is a nurse advocate because that's what I learned here at the College of Nursing. I'll just say Shelly is one of the amazing Spartan nurses that I had a chance to connect with at my table tonight. So with that, I'd just like to welcome her up to share a few words. So 26 years ago, if you would have told me I'd be standing in front of you accepting this award, I would have never believed you. <laughs> I had no clue that empathy, um, that empathy, caring, advocacy with a degree in nursing from Michigan State University would help me change healthcare in the communities that I serve. So to all you nurses out there, whether you're faculty, whether you're students, whether you're alumni, don't ever underestimate the power of the voice of a nurse. Never underestimate it because you are special, you are unique, and it will, your degree, your nursing, being a nurse helps you stand out in this world of craziness. So I am grateful for an amazing career. I've been incredibly blessed for 26 years. But I can't stand in front of you today without recognizing three key influencers in my life. I'm trying to cry. The first is my parents, especially my dad. My dad taught me that I could do anything. <laughs> Thank you. My dad taught me that I could do anything, that there was nothing that would get in my way except for myself. He taught me that I could do and be anything that I desired. The second is this College of Nursing. It pushed me outside of my comfort zone. It showed me that not all nurses work in hospitals. Some nurses work at the... Um, in, in the, uh, they're lobbyists, right? Some nurses work in business. We're not all just work in the hospital. And that was life changing for me. And then the last and probably certainly not the least is the man sitting over there. We've been married for 24 years. He sacrificed his teaching career. For 19 years, he's been a stay home dad so that I could pursue my dreams as a nurse. So I want to thank you for this incredible and wonderful opportunity. It is probably one of my most proudest accomplishments. Spartan nurses will. Go green. Let's give another round of applause for all the Alumni Award recipients. We acknowledge all of the award recipients and the support of their guests who have come tonight to share their commitment to Spartan Nursing. Again, it's been a great blessing with all of you here tonight. I know that we have guests that flew across the country to celebrate accomplishments of our students and our alumni. As you return to your homes this evening, I'd like to once again remind you of the themes of this event, which are longevity and resilience, both symbolized by the ginkgo tree. With that, I'm going to read an excerpt from a poem titled Underneath the Ginkgo Tree by Elisa Steele. The ginkgo tree, he is resilient. He may drop his leaves in November, but he does not die. He burrows his roots deep in the ground. He stands strong and proud. He says he will live to be 1,000 years, maybe even three. He lives in glimpses of hope and memories. 
We nurture him. We talk to him. We share stories while we sit with him. A ginkgo tree, a tree of memories, a tree of life. Where I see you, you see me. Underneath the ginkgo tree. Spartan nurses, as you enter the healthcare field, you are bound to encounter moments of adversity, hardship, desperation, and hopelessness, just as the ginkgo loses its leaves and aesthetic beauty each fall. But as you face these trying times, remind yourself of your purpose and reasons why you entered this calling. And just like the ginkgo stands strong and proud knowing that your education and experiences have prepared you for your toughest challenges ahead, you can also rely on the belief put in you by the unwavering commitment from donors here tonight. You will all continue to make positive differences across the communities in Michigan, across the country, and as we've seen here tonight, across the entire world. On each table, you'll notice a tree-shaped ornament that highlights the theme of tonight's event. Embedded inside of each ornament are the seeds of a ginkgo tree. Upon returning home, we invite you to follow the simple instructions at the bottom of the plant and plant a tree of your own. I'll let my wife take care of that because that poor ginkgo <laughs> might lose its aesthetic beauty again. <laughs> Before wrapping up, I'd like to recognize the faculty and staff in attendance. Please stand. Their sacrifice to ensure the success of the college and its students often goes unsung. One more time, let's give them a round of applause. You may be seated, yeah. Thanks, Dr. Poindexter. We're learning. That's experiential learning. It's good. <laughs> Will all of the College of Nursing alumni in attendance please stand? All of you, come on. There it is. Your commitment to excellence in providing world-class care here in Michigan and beyond our borders has defined our college since the first class walked the stage in 1954. Thank you for all that you do. Finally, uh, tonight's event was planned and produced by the Office of Development and Alumni Relations, who did an exceptional job, except picking an MC. They could have done better. We'll talk about feedback later. <laughs> Beck Spears, Alex Rockhold, Marco Schmizzi, Stephanie Honig, Catherine Anger, Grace Cyprian. Thank you once again for joining us for this wonderful celebration. Thank you to all the staff here tonight who have taken care of us and provided a wonderful meal. This was a fantastic celebration. Have a great weekend. Have a great homecoming. Drive safe and go green. <laughs>